In this episode, we're exploring Bocas del Toro, Panama, and all of its islands and everything it has to offer. Bocas del Toro is a province in the northeast of Panama, just below Costa Rica. The province includes a little chunk of mainland Panama, as well as an archipelago of islands. Generally, however, when someone says they're staying in Bocas del Toro, they're most likely headed to Bocas Town on Isla Colón, or Colón Island, which is the main population center of the island. Here you'll find all variety of shops and street fairs to fulfill your basic needs. While Bocas Town is enjoyable to walk around whenever it's not raining, I found it's better to think of it as a base of operations from which to plan your excursions to some of the other less populated islands of Bocas del Toro. Luckily, Bocas Town is well aware of the value of the surrounding area's natural attractions and has plenty of water taxis and tour services to help you explore. For me, this is one of the best tours that we have in the town because you're going to visit like uh, most the archipelago of Bocas del Toro, just you pay $30. And okay. we include for you as a benefit like a water, soda, historical equipment, and you have the cooler with eye and the passing insurance. That is for free for you. Okay. Okay, that is included in the tour and you visit five different places. Okay. 30 per person and you're going to enjoy an amazing tour in a full day. Oh, uh, I'm working. I mean, after all, this is a travel show. You caught me in my hammock and uh, at my Airbnb, and this Airbnb is amazing. Uh, it's bright orange, as most of the uh, places around here are multicolor, and this one has awesome views. And again, I am working. This is my job, vacationing. There's so many unique hotel and Airbnb options in Bocas del Toro, and when staying on an island province, it's almost harder to find lodging without waterfront views. And while it does rain often in Bocas just like the rest of Panama, the bold colors both inside and out make sure that this place never feels drab. Keep in mind, however, that many areas of Bocas Town are still developing, but if you go in with an open mind and a little bit of research beforehand, you'll discover some unique gems to lounge about in between bouts of island hopping. We were recommended to eat lunch at El Pirata, or Pirata, not sure how you pronounce that, but it means the pirate. Sounds pretty good to me, so let's go have a try. Despite being called the pirate, this restaurant has a distinctly modern feel and decor. They do, however, pay tribute to their namesake by serving up fresh seafood as well as a variety of other options. And of course, no pirate meal would be complete without a view of the water. But be careful, they don't take kindly to you trying to commandeer other diners' plates, no matter how delicious they look. We're at 
Bocas Brewery on Bocas del Toro. It is the only brewery, and it's a craft brewery here at Bocas del Toro. And we're getting ready to have a sampler flight. Even if this wasn't the only option to try some local craft brews on the island, it would still be worth your time, and the Bocas brews definitely make use of their local flavors. Their beers range from your standard amber and pale ales, as well as more tropical flair infused with things like passion fruit, pineapple, and mango. A cold beer here is a great way to escape the heat and meet some new friends. Because the true stars of Bocas del Toro are the islands that are outside of the more popular areas, you may want to start your days early with a simple breakfast before hopping aboard one of the many boat tours. We're on a private boat from Gambit Tours and here in Bocas del Toro and we're headed to several of the islands here but the first on the list is Bird Island and it's supposed to be an iconic looking island. With a name like Bird Island, you might be expecting something from a Hitchcock movie, but in truth it looks like something straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean. Bird Island's other name is Swan's Key, and like all other keys, it's a small landmass that sits on the surface of a coral reef. You might be tempted to try and land upon it and seek some buried gold, but doing so would disturb a much rarer treasure. Boats are prohibited from docking here as it is a protected area and nesting site of both the brown booby and the red-billed tropic bird. The tropic bird is particularly rare, so bring a camera with a long lens and enjoy their unique beauty from a distance. They are truly my favorite. They have tail streamers that are about two times their body length and are amazing to watch during flight. is Star Beach. Uh, it has umbrellas that are like thatch style umbrellas and then a little bit further down are some huts and a lot of people are having fun. But the coolest thing is what's right here behind me and it's a pirate ship called Black Magic. And as you can see, there are people all over it. You can climb up on it. Star Beach is a tranquil gem and it is a great place to take the family for a relaxing swim. And there's also plenty of vendor stands here if you wanna get some drinks and hang out for an afternoon. The beach gets its name from the many starfish that feed in its waters. You might be tempted to pull one up from the ocean to get a better view or a selfie with it, but it's much better to leave them in the water rather than risk endangering them by taking them out of their environment. Luckily, the waters tend to be crystal clear, so you'll most likely get a photo op without disturbing them at all. But if you really have to get up close and personal with the sea life, it's best to book a tour with snorkeling equipment and dive into their world. Many of the tours offer this as an added feature and the coral reefs of the area are well worth exploring. And although the beautiful scenery and calm waters may have made us think we were good at relaxing, we were about to encounter some friends who would teach us what taking it easy was really all about. Behold, Sloth Island. Just like Bird Island, these animal friends are viewed from your boat rather than by actually walking on the island. But these slow moving creatures seem very happy to just hang out in the trees overhead. Although I really couldn't tell if they were unhappy as these guys always look like they're smiling. But with all this tropical beauty, how can you not?
This is Zapatillo Island number two, and over here is Zapatilla Island number one. I guess with all these islands, they were bound to run out of names eventually. Zapatilla means shoe in Spanish. Both Zapatillas are uninhabited islands and their untainted nature makes them some of the most beautiful in the world. These islands offer great snorkeling opportunities where you can see even more colorful reef or you can spend hours walking along their soft sand beaches enjoying the amazing views of the crystal waters. Of course, all this island hopping helped us build up quite an appetite, so the next stop on our tour is to include some food. We're at Makabiti restaurant and we're getting ready to have a whole snapper and this is on the water so uh, it's accessible by boat and is uh, the fish just looks amazing. I can always tell the food is fresh if I can see its face. This place was a great overwater restaurant stop while on our boat tour and had some fantastic looking drink options as well. While it is a popular destination for boat tours, there's never a reason to get bored as you can explore the surrounding waters while waiting. Red Frog Beach and it's on one of the other islands here in Bocas del Toro and uh, you can see people enjoying themselves on the beach. The surf is high and I have to say I really like Bocas del Toro. There's a lot to do here. Unlike the other animal named areas, we didn't see any red frogs while at Red Frog Beach, but we did see a number of people enjoying the sand and surf. Bocas del Toro is truly a beach lover's paradise and a boat tour is a great option to explore the many choices and find the right one for you. Exploring the province of Bocas del Toro can definitely fill up your day, but luckily there's time to party it up once night falls. We're in Bocas del Toro during the week of Carnival, which is their second busiest time of the year, with New Year's being the first. And it's an amazing crowd, there's a lot going on. Just like in other places, Carnival is a five-day festival before Lent begins. 
a perfect time to let loose your inhibitions before a traditional period of sacrifice. Focus's parades might not be as grandiose as the ones in Brazil or New Orleans, but they definitely bring their own unique flavor to the celebrations. Thousands of people from around the world gather in Bocas for the non-stop party, which of course features music, dancing, and food, but also celebrates unique elements of Bocas's history through costuming and tradition. The streets fill with people partying all five nights, but the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday is undoubtedly the largest celebration and is something to keep in mind when visiting this time of the year, depending on if you're trying to avoid or join in with the crowds. We've just finished our meal at Space, and it's here on planet Earth, here in Bocas del Toro. We had the Cameroons, which are shrimp in English, and they were fantastic. So you'll have to come here and try it for yourself. Even if you're not here at Carnival, Space Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to enjoy some live music and enjoy a drink. Their psychedelic decor helps add to the laid back casual environment and makes this an ideal place to sit back and people watch at the end of a long day of travel. Here on Bocas del Toro, you can get around with just a dollar on taxis. It's probably the most efficient taxi system I've ever seen because it's more of a ride share. Uh, you hop in and they are picking other people up along the way. They're always in vehicles such as this where multiple people can sit in them. And they basically will take you in different parts of the island, but you may have to wait a few minutes to let them drop other people off. But it is, uh, it is cheap. It's a dollar cheap. our final day in Bocas at Buena Vista Restaurant. This place offers some delicious takes on classic breakfast options, and the proof of their quality is in their longevity. They've been serving food in Bocas for over 19 years, and just recently moved to this beautiful waterfront location. This is truly a Bocas institution, and according to their descriptions online, eating at Buena Vista helps directly support 10 local families. water taxi ride to another island where there's a chocolate factory and this water taxi costs five dollars a person each way. water taxi to get to this island where up in the hill is and it's definitely up in the hill uh, the signs say it's a 17 minute walk to get here uh, we did it in probably about seven or eight minutes uh, and you need some kahunas to do it in seven or eight minutes because we were fast about it but we're gonna go have a look and see what it's like knowing that I get chocolate at the end is definitely the best way to encourage me to walk quickly up a hill and once up there, we were rewarded with a truly unique adventure. Up in the Hills is really more of a chocolate experience than it is a chocolate factory. This organic hilltop farm is sure to be a highlight of the trip for anyone willing to make the trek. Ran by a family who is seeking a sustainable lifestyle with delicious coffee and chocolate, 
This place is a labor of love, unlike anything you'll commonly find in Western society. Javier is the owner and tour guide, and he treats everyone like a friend. Unlike many tours, which just give you a quick overview of the process, you leave with a real sense of what it takes to sustain this organic farm. And it's easy to get caught up in the family's enthusiasm for what they do. It's easy to start to fantasize about giving up your hectic lifestyle and shifting to their wasteless way of living, but then the jungle bugs help you bring you back to reality. After the tour, you're treated to snacks at a communal table, which is really kind of an organic feast and a great way to get a visceral understanding of what all the work is for. It's the sort of experience that really helps bring strangers together. An organic chocolate brownie from up in the hills, and it's made with their yeah, own cocoa. Oh, wow. And the African beans really dangerous. Very good. Wow. We have a friend. That might be the best brownie. It's good. So anybody who knows me knows I love sushi. And we're gonna try out Raw, which is an Asian fusion and sushi lounge, and see what it's like. But this area is loaded with restaurants. There is literally one after another, and every one of them has an amazing view of the water. They're just literally one right next to the other with each of them having balcony views over the water. So it's amazing, the food's been great at all of them. Raw is filled with fun decor and Asian posters, pop culture and manga drawings, but the real art is on the plate. The sushi rolls are masterfully plated and their bright colors are an Instagrammer's dream come true. And luckily they all taste as good as they look. Well, that concludes our excellent adventure and Bocas journey. The province of Bocas del Toro has an amazing Caribbean vibe, exotic sea life, and too many natural wonders to see in just one trip. And while we didn't do any surfing, we found that Bocas del Toro is a serious destination for surfers. So what are you waiting for? Hurry up and take it easy in Bocas. <laughs>